Hello everyone! In the last video, I showed how to create a simple PWM in QSpace using the C++ block. However, in real microcontrollers like the STM32, the PWM peripherals do have more functionality. So in this video, I want to model the functionality of an advanced control timer PWM of an STM32 microcontroller. In an advanced control timer of the STM32 microcontroller, the input clock signal can be divided down with a clock prescaler. And then in the counter, the maximum value can be set in the auto relay register. And the counter can be set to be up counting, down counting, or up down counting. The capture compare register defines the duty cycle compared to the auto reload register. And then the output is generated with an insertion of an dead time if required. And the output control gives some functionality like enabling the output or disabling the output and changing the polarity. First of all, let's take a look how the prescaler is implemented. The prescaler divides down the input clock and the clock for the counter can be calculated with the input clock signal, which is the oscillator, over prescaler plus one. So when we want to have no division of the input clock, we put zero in the prescaler. And when we have, want to have some division, it has to be greater than one. At the moment, the prescaler is put as zero, so therefore we don't have any division. And at every rising edge, the counter counts one digit up. Now, when we put the prescaler, for example, one, every second rising edge, the counter increments by one. In the program, this is implemented with a define clock prescaler and in the main, or main program, the clock prescaler is after every rising edge is counted up by one. And when the prescaler counter is larger than the defined prescaler, we go into the counter model and count up the counter. The counter in a PWM counts either up down or up down depending on which mode is selected. Once the counter reaches the auto reload register, in my program I called it the counter max, it either goes down to zero when it's in up counting mode, when it's in down counting mode, when the counter reaches zero, it goes up to the counter max, and in up counting mode it changes the direction once it hits the maximum counter value. The direction register within the PWM um, defines if the counter is in up counting or in down counting mode. The PWM frequency can be calculated with this equation, which is the frequency of the counter over the counter max plus one. If, for example, we want to have a PWM output of 10 kilohertz, and the input frequency is 64 megahertz and the prescaler was chosen with 63. We have a counting frequency of 1 megahertz which gives, gives us the counter max we need to have calculated with the counting frequency over the desired PWM frequency gives us a value of 99. Now, if the prescaler is zero and the counting frequency is 64 megahertz, in this case, our counter max would have to be 6399. A frequency of 10 kilohertz is a period of 100 microseconds as seen here. This is in up counting mode with a selected prescaler of 63 and the counter max of 99. Now we 
when we put the prescaler to zero, we need a counter max of the calculated 6,399. 6, and we will get the same frequency. For now, I will leave it with a prescaler of 63 and a counter max of 99. Since it's easier to convert it to duty cycles. The counter has certain features, which is the up counting mode as seen here. Then we have the up down counting mode and therefore I just have two defines. For up down counting, I select up and down counting to be one, compile it and we are in up down counting and like this the period is doubled so therefore we would have to put a value here of 49 since the period is doubled through the up down counting and the other mode is the only down counting mode put it back to 99 and there we start at 99, go down to zero and repeat. The implementation is done in the function counter model. If no limit is hit, we are either counting up and we are in up counting mode. This is shown with the register counter direction or we count down when we are in the down counting mode. Once we hit the maximum and we are in the direction of counting up, which is zero, then either we clear the counter to be zero again, if we are only in the up counting mode. If we are in the down counting mode, we change the direction, which in turn then decreases the values of the counter again. Vice versa, in the down counting mode, when we hit a value of zero and we are in the down counting mode, we either change the direction of the counter to be starting to count up again, or if we are only in the down counting mode and the up counting is not configured, as here in this example at the moment, we put the counter to a value of the counter max again. So we jump up to the maximum value and then it starts counting down again. The counter is compared to the capture compare register. In my simulation, it's the input duty. This gives us a output reference and if they a complementary PWM is chosen, a dead time can be inserted and there are two dead time registers which is the rising dead time and the falling dead time. The dead time is a multiple of the counter period time. The output control gives us a functionality of enabling or disabling the output or changing its polarity. The output enable disable is done with a variable. It's PWM enable or PWM UMN enable, which is the complementary PWM. If they are enabled, we take the output which we get out from the PWM module and else we put out zero. So at the moment we have the two outputs enabled with a certain duty cycle, but if we put it here, we only want one PWM and the complementary disabled, we put it zero our value here and our PWML, which is the PWMN output, is zero. I will go ahead and enable the output again. And we get the following output for a duty cycle of 25%. Now, if we change the polarity, therefore we can just change the define PWM output polarity. When it's zero, it's the standard polarity. And when it's one, we change the polarity of the output, so the PWM high and PWM L will be exactly reversed in this case. As in here, it's exactly reversed. In the PWM module, this PWM output polarity define uh, changes the output for demonstrating the that time, I will change the polarity back to zero. For the that time, there are two variables which can be set, which is the rising edge that time and the falling edge that time. It refers to the PWM high. And this is a multiple of our counter frequency. And our counter 
with a prescaler of 63, it's one megahertz, meaning that if I put here one, our dead time would be one microseconds. And if you want to have different dead times, for example, I could have the rising edge dead time of three, so three microseconds, and the falling edge dead time of five, five microseconds, just to demonstrate its functionality. So when I run it and simulate it, we can see here the rising edge dead time. It's exactly three from 76 to 79. And for the falling edge dead time here, we are from 101 microseconds to 106 microseconds. The implementation of the dead time is done in the PWM module. When the duty cycle is higher than the counter, which is the case here, in the transition, then we put the outputs both to zero. We would have a dead time rising edge of zero. We would right away turn the dead time high to one, considering a polarity of zero in this case. If we have some value like at the moment three in there, we count up the dead time counter until we hit three, and then the transition happens to one here. In addition, the dead time counter value is changed to the defined falling edge dead time because in the falling edge dead time, we decrease the value of the dead time counter to zero. So once we hit zero, we have the transition of the PWM low to one. Now with including the dead time, we can as well put the polarity to one. So we reverse the polarity and we get our output like the following. In the transition, both are high, the PWM high and goes low, the defined period. This configurable PWM can be used in many projects. For example, here I use the same code for a gate driver design where I needed the reverse polarity and a inserted dead time for rising and falling edge to generate the output voltage. Output voltage was then a 60 volt pulse and the dead time and PWM was generated using the, in this video explained PWM modulation of an SDM32 microcontroller.